Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and we are the adults in the room. The XRP investors have always been the, the adults in the room. That's why, like that video I showed you in the first video today of this guy, this guy is apparently the Moon Carl, some Bitcoiner, and he's a child. I mean, these are children that, that have not, that don't, they're children that are looking at things through an ideology instead of using their brains. They're looking at things emotionally instead of using their brains and doing the research, which I've done four plus years of two to three videos a day talking about this one thing. You can't capture an adult's attention with one thing and one company and one digital asset like that unless they you know, someone who's older that's been around for a while, especially in finance, you can't capture someone's attention like that with just one thing unless there's not just um, not just a bunch of thunder and no rain, but a freaking blizzard storm out there. There is an obvious, it's always been obvious to me what we're dealing with here. And it's always baffled me why so many of the Wall Street players are just constantly beating this Bitcoin drum when they know what it is and they know what it's not. And they're, they're, they're just, a lot of them just aren't being honest about what Bitcoin is and what it is not. So when I saw this video, the, this is the video where he's like, Oh, Bitcoin's going to go to 10 minutes. I don't know what Bitcoin's going to go a lot higher, I think, but only because it's got a marketing machine, a wall street marketing machine behind it. Aside from that, and this is what a lot of people don't think about. Once Bitcoin becomes an altcoin, there's no reason to own it anymore because once it doesn't have the top spot, there are hundreds, thousands of digital assets that have better tech behind them, also have the limited amount like Bitcoin does, and many of them have proof of work. If proof of work is what you think is the holy grail, and they could, they could replace it in a second. So, and that's the great fear of people like this. That's the reason they come after XRP all the time because they know XRP is the one that stands to take that top spot. All right. So this Mr. Whale had said, crypto YouTuber, the moon Carl says, Bitcoin is going to 10, 10 million and XRP is going to zero. This pimply nerd just gave us the biggest dump BTC and buy XRP signal ever. Well, to me, it's painful. Oh, it hurts to just listen to someone that's this ignorant of what's going on. And to contrast it, I saw something today and when I was watching it, I was like, okay, this, there's no better contrast than the, I played the video of this clown this morning telling you with all his logic that XRP is going to go to zero and Bitcoin is going to go to 10 million. I played you that video. So now I'm going to play you the contrast. I've said for a long time, we are the adults in the room. We're, we're the ones that are looking at this and saying, wait a minute, look at where, look at what Ripple's doing. Look where, look at, look at who they're meeting with. Look at all, look at where Brad Garlinghouse has been, what stage he's been on with who for the last three, four years. Okay. This guy, meanwhile, has been looking at a Bitcoin chart and, and saying, well, this is, this is going to go up. I think, I think we're hitting a whatever and this, and that, that doesn't mean anything. What I'm talking about is politics. I'm talking about big business. I'm talking about connections and contacts and people on your board and freaking things that have never been seen in the history of finance is what I'm talking about. This Mickey Mouse stuff. Well, anyway, let, I don't have to say anymore. I'm now going to contract. I'm going to show you the adults in the room because there was an adult conversation that went on today at uh, link Two's conference. Now, Against the backdrop of that guy holding up his hand and saying zero and Bitcoin is going to go to 10 million. I want you to now listen to the adults in the room. Here we go. This is Nick Burefato of Link2 and Brad Combs also chimes Did, in. Let's not forget Ripple picked the toughest use case in the digital asset space 
over anyone. And that's why it's taken the longest. And in years to come, the, the people who don't see it today or who didn't believe it today will look back and say, oh, that makes sense because they didn't take the time to do their own research and understand what Ripple is actually doing. And, and it will be clear. There's a lot of things that have happened over the years that we've looked back and say, wow, that, that made sense, but it didn't make sense at the time. And XRP is going to make a lot of sense to people and it's not going to take long. Yeah. Can I throw something in? I know we got to end it, but I just want to throw this in too, because I just think it's so pertinent. We look at the proofs in the partnerships. We also look at the people behind the company. Look at the board of Ripple and understand how many people from the U.S. Treasury are there. That's not a mistake. Then also look at the note that the, the note conversation. We always talk about the Howey test with the SEC case. But when something is a note is always said at the tail end of what Gary Gensler or Hester Peirce talk about the SEC case. They talk about the Howey test and then they talk about the Reeves test. When something is a note, a note is like Federal Reserve dollar bill note. Right. That's what they're talking about. Just what exactly hey, hey, holding up. Right. Hey, hey, no, no, this, five, this, this five dollar bill has a ripple board members name on it. It exactly. says Rosie Rios. Exactly. That isn't an accident. If, if you're here and you don't believe in XRP and what Ripple's doing, why is Rosie Rios name on your money? And why is she on the board of XRP? Why is she on the board of Ripple who's looking to use XRP to move money around the world cheaper and faster than anybody's ever done it? Guys, all you have to do is reach in your pocket, grab your money and pay attention. These are not tough clues to find. They're right there. Well, into and, and, Brad's, into Brad's point, Nick, look at the top side of that 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 five dollar bill. What does it say? It's a Federal Reserve, Reserve note. note. That's yeah. right. That's correct. But XRP is going to zero, and Bitcoin's going to go forever. Shameful. Okay, and he gets an excuse because he's a kid. Some of these people, some of these higher up Wall Street types, they don't deserve that same free pass. It's shameful um, because it's a lie. <laughs> it's been a lie from anyway. All right. I told you uh, uh, I, the other day I had, a, I had a lot of people that have been asking me about Masterworks. These guys um, are they're 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 sponsoring a couple of segments this month and i wanted to show you another video this guy's sharp the ceo this is the ceo scott lynn of of masterworks he's got so many cool clips that are that are around i wanted to show you another one listen to what they're sure. doing so if you take a take a step back and just look at the the size of the art market overall and how it's performed over the past 25 years Contemporary art is appreciated at 14% a year, which basically is beating beating most other asset classes. The problem has been the only way to allocate to it is if you have millions of dollars to buy a painting. So Masterworks was the first company to go out, purchase a painting, uh, securitize it with the SEC as a public offering, and then sell shares in that painting. So that's that's the very simple process that we use to take these, these great works of art and make them into investment vehicles. And we, we chatted last September, I want to say, uh, around kind of this concept and what you've seen in terms of the growth. Okay, I just want to show you that clip. And now, um, look at this. I was on their website today. This is masterworks.io. And by the way, I have in the link in the description of this video where you can, you can look and it'll take you to Masterworks. You can literally go and apply. I think you have to, let me see what it says up here. Yeah, they've got a thing on here, I think. Um, let me hit the refresh and make sure it's still there. They got, yeah, they've got a, a, a thing on here where you can skip the wait list. You click that and enter your information and then you can open an account up and um, they've, you got to fill out some information and whatnot. But anyway, look at this annualized appreciation. This is why I'm interested in it. This is why I bought, I invested in, in some of this uh, this week is um, contemporary art. I've never been able to be exposed to this asset class. But what it does is it helps you diversify. I've got some gold. I have I own a house. I mean, um, I uh, yeah, I've got some equities right now. And then, um, but you can see that when I was a financial advisor, I'm not now, but when I was, they used to teach us that to diversify the diversification and talking about diversification, and that's what it is. But this asset class, art. I don't know if it's an asset class itself, but it's a category anyway. But 
look how it's appreciated compared to the others. It's never bad to, especially if you're older, it's never bad to be exposed to things so that you're, you're, you're balanced in your uh, approach. So anyway, but that, I don't know your situation, that's between you and your financial advisor because I'm not one. So anyway, um, go check it out. Now, Stefan Huber um, <laughs> had put this up. This, this clown show going on with having to do with Ethereum is really unbelievable. So as you know, Kavina Gupta is now suing consensus, okay? Look at this. The weekly Friday happy, happy hours held upstairs at Consensus Brooklyn office were also fraught for, for Gupta, who does not use illicit drugs. The open use of cocaine, psychedelics, pills of unknown origin, and marijuana when, it, when its use was illegal in New York, all of which were offered to Gupta caused her to feel ill at ease at the office. Joe Lubin, who openly discusses his fondness for LSD, set the tone for his behavior. And then it goes on to talk about how they were improperly, uh, not without appropriate tax reporting and withholding. When, how long till the IRS jumps on that one? Okay, and then Ripple Eye had put this out. Um, it's no wonder we're in this position. The entire existence of crypto has revolved around the Ethereum gang in some fashion from the early days, but this lawsuit is eye-opening AF. It shows us the reality of the people who tried to create the reality. Exactly. What a freaking mess. And everybody, we all know who's to blame here, folks. They've said it in their own arrogant words. Now, John Deaton makes an excellent point here. Have you noticed how Gary Gensler, Allison Heron Lee, Hester Pierce, and other SEC leaders and staffers never give a personal opinion on whether a specific token is a security? Then why was Bill, Cl Bill Hinman so eager and willing to gratuitously give a public speech declaring Ethereum not one? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? That's because he wouldn't do it. Um, Ripple ODL platforms receive 40 million XRP in merely an hour from a non wallet. Um, let's see. Let's see where, what it says here. Whale Alert detected two large XRP transactions carrying 20 million coins each made approximately 10 hours ago. Both were made from the same address. Um, uh, by the crypto tractors unknown, the transfers were made to Bitso and Bitstamp. I guess those are the ODL corridors. All right, interesting stuff. Um, November, Gary Gensler's November calendar is up in the most, I went through the whole thing. The most interesting thing is this, on uh, November 2nd, he met with Brian Armstrong um, of Coinbase, and it looks like some several officers from Coinbase. Previously, Gary Gensler did not want to talk to them. And speaking of not wanting to talk, uh, Tom Emmer, uh, had tweeted a while back that he was still waiting on a, on a response from Gary Gensler from his November 3rd letter asking him to make sense of why Bitcoin futures ETFs are allowed to, to trade but not spot ETFs. He said he was still waiting on January 3rd and now he's still waiting on February 3rd, a month later. This is your SEC chairman of the United States of America, folks. You couldn't even run my business if you're this irresponsible. Now, Blockchain Association, um, there, this is a clip that I found because um, I keep asking why is the Blockchain Association, who's supposed to support the entire crypto industry, why are they not outwardly supporting Ripple and John Deaton and what he's doing, suing the SEC on behalf of all of these crypto holders, XRP holders? Well, I went back, I remembered uh, Stuart Alderati used to be on their board of directors. And so I'm asking the question, uh, you'll see he is no longer showing up on their board of directors. He used to show up. Now he's not showing up. So does anyone know Stuart Alderati, if Stuart Alderati is still on the board? They won't even speak to John Deaton and won't really address the issues around the Ripple case, especially the Ethereum free pass with a 10 foot pole. Um, and uh, TAIG says, looks like Ripple's still a member, but um, they're, he's checking on Al Dorati, so we shall see. I Trust Capital has announced the RIN. The, they've added the RIN. Is it a token? RIN token? I know nothing about the RIN token. I just try to make you aware when they do add a new um, thing. That's itrustcapital.com. 
Uh, James Philan, court denies Ripple's request to seal legal memos provided to Chris Larson and briefing associated with those memos and grants Ripple's request to file Sir reply to the SEC's motion to strike the fair notice defense. Now, John Deaton's law firm had kind of summarized this. Um, Brad Garling helps to seal some exhibits to previous motions. Torres will unseal an email to Larson and legal memos to Ripple finding arguments to seal unjustified but granted redactions to Garling House to protect potentially sensitive information in three documents. She also ordered public re release of documents by both sides under seal, anticipating motions to seal from other side that never came. Lastly, Torres will allow Ripple a surreply. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Surreply um, to the SEC Gov's memorandum of law in support of motion to strike fair notice defense. Gary Gensler was on Bloomberg today, and unfortunately for you, he's going to say the same old BS that he You're always says. You're a platform, and you have 75 or 100 or sometimes 5,000 tokens on that platform. Probabilities are that a number of them, and maybe many of them, are what's called a security. And, and it's Congress painted with a broad brush, and it comes down to this. Are you raising money from the public? and the public's anticipating profits based on the efforts of others. Uh, and uh, my predecessor, Chair Clayton, uh, the agency that I'm honored to uh, chair at this point in time uh, is gonna try to pursue investor protection. And if that means bringing greater enforcement actions, we'll do that, but it would be better to have these platforms come in, work with us and come under the securities laws. Gary does not look healthy. He might need to come get out of that house. Now, today, Charles Gasparino tweeted this out. This is interesting. Breaking, the Justice Department is investigating investigating into alleged abuses of short sellers in, uh, is focused on many, as many as 60 firms with particular focus on activist short sellers. Sources tell Fox Business story developing. Now, I don't know if this has to, to do with crypto or the stock market, but for some crazy reason, this is the first clip that popped in my mind when I saw, not for any reason other than it just, it was a short seller that I remember. I mean, it was interesting, CNBC, not to pick on CNBC, but I think I can them here. They literally had a show where they were one by one walking people through how to buy the Ripple, the XRP coin. Literally when it was trading at $3.20, having moved from 20 cents eight weeks earlier. From the day of that show, the thing plummeted. Uh, we were short. Uh, it plummeted uh, all the way back to 50 cents. That was, was peak nonsense? Peak nonsense. I, I, mean, would, it was, I would love to know where they were shorting it and who was shorting it with them. That would be a fascinating discovery if there was ever any kind of situation where that could be found out. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family. These short sellers sure are interesting. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this all pans out.